Back with Bobby and JG Radio. Our show today is entitled Interim Financing or How to Build on Your Own Lot. We're going to try to get all the facts to let the public know. It's one of the most, I think, sought out things, especially for second, third time home buyers. Our first guest is Robin Morton. She's the founder uh, of Cache Real Estate Financing. She is now our resident loan officer here, Bobby and JG Radio co host for us. She started Cache Real Estate in 2004, but she's been doing mortgages for 20 years. She has this really cool office downtown right off Broadway. How are you doing today, Robin? I'm good, thanks. So as I was saying in the, right now, a lot of buyers, they come up to us and they they always want that that third option. So it's either buy a pre-existing home, buy a home from a builder that's already building in a neighborhood, or the third thing is that they want to build on their own lot. And that's kind of what... That's very common. People think that they can just buy a, a, a land, a piece of land and then get out there and just build a house. It, it's, it's a lot more to it. So, yeah, it's a lot more into it. And mainly what they need is you. They need you, you the third party person. They need the interim financing. So let's go over what is what exactly is interim financing? Interim financing is the construction loan um, used for the building of the property. Okay, so there. So you're talking about getting a lot and then th- getting the money to build it from the ground up. Correct. Okay. And it's called interim because it's a short-term note, sure. and it's just to bridge the time between start of construction and the construction and putting a permanent loan in place. Yeah, bridge is a really good word because you know uh, in the end they do a finalized n- note or loan, but it's something to bridge them in between the dirt to the finishing product, I guess, right? That's correct. Is there a minimum loan amount for interim financing? There is not an interim uh, loan amount that that is minimum or maximum. There's no maximum for interim either, right? I got you. There is not. And so who are these interim loans really for? I mean, who's doing them? Yeah. Who's Who's offering them? Who's getting them? Who's getting them? Um, Consumers that are building their own houses. Okay. Builders that are building for the consumer. Sure. Yeah, so it's not a lot of first-time home buyers. It's more your seasoned home buyer. Correct. Maybe second, third home down the line. Correct. I see maybe two percent of the buyers are first-time home buyers. Most are second, third, fourth-time home buyers. And you bring up a good point that it's not only for the the buyers themselves that are out scouting out their own location and and custom home builder, like my man Jesse uh, Piggott here that we're about to talk to you, but it's also for people um, or builders that are that have you know. Uh, that they go out and build on their own lot. They need your services as well. Correct. And I've noticed that not a lot of loan officers do this. Is there a reason why not a lot of loan officers try to push this interim financing? It's a specialty type of program, and I think that there there's not a lot of loan officers who specialize in it because there's a lot of moving parts. And you have to you have to dedicate yourself to the moving parts, understand each of them, so you can put together a package for the builder and the buyer and everybody. So when you talk about the specialization, it, it so you're saying that you probably need to know more than the average loan officer to get this stuff done because you're you're working with a lot more people than than loan officers usually do in a real estate transaction. Absolutely, you have to, as a loan officer that that specializes with construction lending, you True. have to understand the process from the builder's point of view, the buyer's point of view, the title company's point of view, um, the surveyor's point of view, everybody's point of view. Yeah, so you have to line everyone up, get get all the stars in line just to make it happen, and it's just very t- and it's also a very timely process too. It's not, you know, the normal thirty to forty five turnaround that a classic FHA conventional VA loan takes either. That's true. That's yeah. very true. the The challenge is is that with a purchase transaction, a pre owned home, you get a contract as a loan officer, and it tells you exactly what the price is. With construction financing, where you're building on your own lot. There is a price from the builder, a price from the the lot payoff, a price from the title policy. And as a loan officer, you're pulling together all the numbers to create a success story for everybody involved in the transaction. So and what all can a home buyer include in, into this interim financing loan? Can you put in the, the lot and the actual build cost itself? Yes. Um, you're, you're building a price of a house um, as your custom building. So if you haven't purchased your land yet, your land would be included in the price. Okay. All your construction costs from the ground up, 
slab, the, the typical things that you you would think of as construction costs, but you also could include your architectural fees. Let's say you want to pull in, you want to put a pool in, you can include a pool. The pool, swimming pool can be included. Correct. See, a lot of people don't know that, I don't think. Your fencing, um, your all your sidewalks, your driveways, what, what septic, is typically septic called. Septic tank. Septic wells um barbe outdoor barbecue kitchens and barbecue pits are real popular right now you can include anything that is permanently being affixed to that property in that in that financing package it's awesome if you're just joining us we're speaking with robin morton uh, from cache real estate finance she is walking us through what an interim financing is and everything that it entails and how specialized this loan program is so robin what should buyers have in place before they apply for an interim financing loan? Like, how do they get prepared to meet with you, or, or what do they need to do when when they to wrap their heads around getting started on something like this? Have a dream. Just have a dream. Just have a dream. All right. So Martin Luther King and anyone after him, just have a dream. <laughs> come in, meet with meet with you. But uh, but can, can fi interim financing loans be used with any builder? Is there do they kind of team up with a certain builder that they have to use? Interim financing in the consumer's name can be used with any builder they choose. Gotcha. So they can go and so they can pick out everything. I mean, they can make it as custom as humanly possible. They can go out and find the actual lot. They can actually meet the perfect builder. Um, and, and like you said, they just have to have in their head exactly what they want. Exactly. And how about as far as the builder himself? Does he have to have any special qualifications to be able to deal with this uh, interim financing? The, the banks that we source the construction loan or interim financing loan to do have uh, builder requirements. Typically, they'll ask the builder for a set of their financials, a list of customers they've done business with in the past, their subcontractor and vendor names. They'll pull a credit report. Banks want to deal with builders that have experience, a good reputation, and can create a success story. So, so do they have to know what lot that they want? before they, they start the, the interim financing process? They don't have to have a lot selected at the time they come see me. Sure. At some point in the process, they do have to select a lot because it does affect the cost of the house. What about having a bunch of builders as options already? Is that is that an, a must or, or do you recommend them getting the financing process done first and then they can always do everything whenever they're ready. I, I always recommend the financing pieces done first so that you're looking within your scope, within your price range. You're not designing something that perhaps you can't qualify for and then you have to start over and you've spent that energy and those costs. Sure. So yeah. So if they go meet with you first, then it makes a lot more logical sense that, you know, before they start to meet uh, builders like, like Jesse, you know, they have to know their price point of what they, what they can spend per square foot, know what kind of lot, you know, they can afford, give give all the information that they need to know, you know, after all the utilities are in and all this stuff is done, this is the ending point that I need to be at. So what would you say is a typical timeline for, for the interim financing loan? The typical timeline from the time I see a customer to the time they close into the construction loan and start construction is about four months. Four months from, from the beginning to the end. From the beginning to the end, unless they come with a lot already purchased and their plans and specifications already complete. Sure. So, so walk me through a timeline of, of, of the process for inter interim financing. And let's assume with this timeline, they come with their plans. Right. They come with their specs. The builder's pretty well down the road and has bid the house and right. they're ready to engage. Right. It, at that point, we're going to order an appraisal. Okay. The appraisal is a crucial piece in this process. Sure. Um, the house has to appraise for at least what the whole package comes in at. Okay. And that process takes typically five to seven business days to get an appraisal in. Okay. During that time, in that five to seven business days, we're gathering loan documents and approving the credit, and we're uh, approving um, the capacity, which is income and assets. And once the collateral, which is the appraisal, is approved, then we go to interim submission. Interim submission is typically a four-day process to approval and then another week until we close into the construction loan. At that time, we can start construction. Okay, so they've now checked the, the, the person's credit, just to make sure that I can wrap my head around this. The collateral is what the uh, uh, proposed appraised value of the whole project is. That's all right. And, and uh, they've got, like, some permanent commitment package from, from you all. 
and then and then after that it's just the regular loan at that point correct and i get this question a lot why am i coming to see you first robin you, <laughs> you're you're gonna do the loan when the house is finished because we prepare a complete loan package for the construction lender the interim lender and they use those loan documents to approve the buyer for the construction loan sure they want to know the bank wants to know that at the end of construction you've got somebody that's going to give you a permanent loan and pay us off right and so uh, once all this happens you know the during the construction of the loans they start to take what would you call a draw right a draw uh, to start the actual you know foundation then the sheetrock and so there's all these different draws you don't just give the buyer a check for whatever hundreds the of total thousands. amount yeah no. it's, it's little by little as as they're in different stages of the home building process correct i think of it like a a big credit card we approve you for this credit limit sure and then as you need the money to pay the builder the subcontractors the vendors and the material suppliers you take the money and as you take the draw money um that draw balance is increasing mm -hmm and interest is accruing off of that balance during the process is there anyone during at the, the bank process. that's actually going out there to make sure step by step that it's being done that it's being done correctly or maybe inspected the bank goes out to make sure that what you're asking for in a draw has been completed they are not going out to to inspect for quality gotcha. control and assurance. Just to make sure that whatever they've given money for has been done before they give any more money. Is that is correct. Gotcha. So, Robin, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to get um, back and ask some more questions about this interim financing. Uh, we're also going to let all the listeners know, everyone out there on SoundCloud, YouTube, uh, and Bobby and JJ Radio, how they can save $500 on an interim financing loan through Cash A Mortgage. Uh, we're going to take a quick break from our show or and listen to our show sponsors. You can find us at BobbyandJJRadio.com. You can become a fan of the show. You can go to our YouTube page. Um, Instagram, everything but MySpace, right? Or are you on MySpace? Now? I'm still on. No, I'm not on MySpace. Okay, so everything but MySpace. We'll be right back. <laughs> 